Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, come on, come on. Somebody give God some glory in the house. We can do better than that. Give God some love in the house. Come on, let God know how you really feel this morning. God has been good to all of us. And we ought to give God our best praise. And we ought to let God know that we appreciate him for watching over us last night. But right early this morning, he touched us with a finger of love. And he enabled us to get up to see a day that we have never seen before. And those of us are here ought to lift our voices and lift our hands and just give God a praise now. We ought to act like we appreciate him. We ought to act like that we love him. We ought to act like that we are in church today. We ought to act like that God loved us enough just to wake us up. And we ought to lift our voices and just tell God, hallelujah, God. Come on, all over this building, just open up your mouth. Lift your hands, stand on your feet, whatever you need to do. Make some noise, but we ought to let God know how we really feel. Because God has been good to all of us. God loved us even when we didn't know how to love ourselves. And we ought to give God our best praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we have a praise on our lip before we get here, when we come in the sanctuary, it shouldn't be a problem to give God some love in the house. Anybody here just love God? I dare you to just lift your voice and tell God, I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Make some noise in the building. Come on. Just lift those voices and give God a praise. If you haven't gave God a praise yet, today is your day. Just to give God your best praise. Hallelujah. 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 Put our hands together. Come on, John.
Yes, you did. You, you made a way. You moved mountains. You caused walls to fall with your power. We form miracles. There is nothing that's from Psalms 51 verse 1 through 10 have mercy upon me O God according to your loving kindness according to your multitude of your tender mercy block out my transgression wash me thoroughly for my iniquity and clean me for my sins for I have acknowledged my transgression and my sin is always before me against you and you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge behold I brought forth in thy iniquity and in sin my mother's conceded me behold you desire trust in the inner parts and in the whole and in the hidden parts you will make me then know wisdom plunge me with hiss and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness, that the bones that you have broken may rejoice. Hide my face from my sins, and block out my iniquity. Clean in me a new heart, O God, and restore me in a right fast spirit within me. I have read Psalms 51. Uh, 1 through 10. May God have a blessing to the doers and hearers of his holy word. Good morning, church. God is good. I say that again. God is good. Despite all the things that's going on in the world, the Lord has blessed us to see another day. And for that, we should be grateful. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come this morning as humble as we know how. Lord, we come thanking you for this another day you've blessed us with. For, Lord, we know it's not because of our goodness and because of our kindness, but we know it's only because of your grace and your mercy. And right now, we just want to say thank you. Lord, we thank you for your darling son, Jesus, who hung, bled, and died on the cross so we may have this right to the tree of life. And for, Lord, you know you said in your word that if we would knock, a door shall be opened. And if we would seek, we should find. And if we would ask, it should be given. Right now, Lord, we come asking you to bless us. Bless us the only way you know we stand in need of. We ask you to continue to bless our homes, bless our families. Lord, we ask a special blessing for our kids as they go about their many destinations today, traveling to and fro. We ask you to continue to put your arm protection around them and go with them and stand by them, and that you will lead them and guide them in the way in which you'd have them to go. And not only that, Lord, have them to be productive young men and young women and do all the things that will be pleasing in our sight. And Lord, we'll be so quick to give you the honor and give you the praise. Lord, we actually look in on your bereaved family all over this land and country. We actually continue to create in them more faith and less fear and that you will continue to build them up where they may be weak and prop them up where they're torn down. And continue to instill in them that you're still God and you're God all by yourself and that you can do everything but fail. Lord, look in on those that are less fortunate than we. Bless those that may be incarcerated, those that are homeless, jobless, sick and shut in, in the mental institution, in the hospital, in the nursing homes, and behind the prison walls. Lord, we actually continue to give us more knowledge and more wisdom in your word 
so we can not only be just hearers of your word, but Lord, we can actually go out and be doers of your word. Please forgive us for our sins, O mission, as well as commission, and create in us a clean heart so we can be able to do thy will. And Lord, be so quick to give you the honor and give you the praise. Lord, continue to bless our nation, bless our leaders. Lord, we ask that you let them lean not to their own understanding, but in all they're doing, Lord, let them get an understanding in you. And perhaps everything that they may say or do will be pleasing in thy sight. Lord, we bless our, bless our pastor and bless his family. Lord, continue to give him more knowledge and more wisdom in your words so he can be able to feed his people and we can be like sponge and exhort what he's trying to tell us. Lord, we thank you right now for all that you've done and all you're about to do in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and thank God. Come on, let the church say amen. Come on, let us all say amen again. Come on, anybody here love God? Anybody here want to thank God for anything this morning? Come on, y'all, let's act like we love God. Let's act like we, give, we want to give him praise because we know God has been good to all of us. And sometimes we forget about who God really is. But every chance we get, we ought to lift our voices and just tell God thank you. Every chance we get, we all just lift our voices and tell God thank you. That's why whenever we get a chance and God do something good for us, and, and we know we are not worthy of it, and, and we just need to lift our voices and just tell God, thank you, you love. I need everybody in the building. Come on, help me. Thank you, you love. Thank you, you love. Anybody want to thank him for anything? I just want to thank you, love. Thank Everybody, lift your voice and just tell him. I 
believe I said again, Lord, to be. Have you been good to anybody here? Wave your hands in the building if you've been good to you. Lord, you've been, Lord, you've been, Lord, you've been, Lord, you've been. Lord, I want to thank you for it. I want to thank you, Jesus. Then it all you done for me, Lord. You made, you made a way for me. Have you made a way for anybody else here this morning? Tell the Lord you made. Jesus, you made. Hallelujah, Jesus. I just want to thank you. I want to thank you. I want to thank you, Jesus. You've been good to me, Lord. You've been good to me. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Lord, I want to, Lord, I want to, Lord, I want to. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I got to tell you, Lord, you made. You made a way. Lord, you made. You made, you made, you made, you made. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. You Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will wait.
Jesus Christ, we praise God for the Holy Spirit today that I have and will put my confidence in him because God deserves all of our honor and praise. If anybody, we can be consistently be with God and be knowing that we can have confidence in him. We, it is God himself. And it is a good day to be alive today. It is a great day to be alive. It, it may be raining on the outside, but, uh, but, but in spite of what is going on the outside, God has yet been good to all of us. And, and certainly we are grateful for what uh, he has done and what God is going to do this morning. To those who are listening, those who are in their homes, we pray that God will bless your life and bless your family uh, today as we celebrate uh, Jesus Christ. And we give him honor and we give him praise today. Well, remember those who are, who are sick, those who are shut in this morning, those who are listed uh, this morning. We certainly pray for them. And we pray for this morning, uh, Terrence uh, uh, Mitchell. Uh, Terrence is in the hospital, but we pray that God will uh, bless him today. We pray for uh, Pastor Fernando Bailey. 
uh, who's also in the hospital this morning and praying for Brenda Springfield and Board and Tim Board today as they uh, laid their son to rest, praying for the Copeland Harris family, uh, the passing of, of, um, of Chandra, uh, that we funeralized on yesterday, and we're certainly praying for that family this morning. And the Sanders family, we continue lifting them up uh, this morning as well. Let us bow our heads. Yeah. Oh God, our God, how excellent is thy name in all of the earth. God, we give you honor and we give you praise in this place. For God, all we have, thy hand has provided. And God, we thank you for being our provider. God, we thank you, God, that you've been consistent with us. Lord, you woke us up early every morning. And even today, you gave us another day of life. And God, we come to give you honor and give you praise for that. We thank God for Jesus Christ. We thank God for the Holy Spirit. God, we give you honor this morning, God, because you have looked beyond all of our faults. You supplied all of our needs. We come, God, as humble as we know how to bow, asking for your mercy and your grace. God, we call names, and there are names that are listed on our list. But, God, you know everybody by name. You know everybody where they are, whether they're in a hospital, whether they're in homes. Uh, you know exactly where they are. And I hear the words, so, Lord, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. And, God, we pray right now, God, in the midst of our weather, that you'll bless our lives right now. God, we thank you right now, God. Everybody that have breath, all the praise his name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we enter into his course with praise. We enter into his course, God, with thanksgiving. We give you praise in this house right now. We seek your presence. We need your presence. We need your power in this place today. God, we give you praise and honor. In the marvelous name of Jesus, we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen, Amen today. It is just great to uh, see so many of you here today that in spite of the weather, you're still here. And we are grateful for your presence in this place today. Amen. We won't hold you long, but we want to certainly uh, cover the territory that needs to be covered this morning with the word. Because one of the greatest things we come to church for is the word of God. Yeah. Uh, and and I, you didn't come to look at me. I didn't come to look at you. But we've come to lift up the word of our God. Because there's power in the word of God. And I pray uh, of this morning that you take great notes. I really do. Uh, I need you to take great notes. I need you to pay attention. Uh, I, I need you to pay attention. I need you to make sure uh, that you pay attention. And learn something before you leave here. Uh, and then I do also, I do need your amen. I do need your amens every now and then between your slumber and your sleep. I need you to make sure you say amen to that. Amen. We praise our God today. From the 91st number of Psalms, uh, the 91st number of Psalms, Psalms 91. Amen to that. Psalms 91. Let us read those words together from the new living translation those who live in the shelter of the most high will find rest in the shadow of the almighty oh yeah this i declare about the lord he alone is my refuge my place of safety he is my god and i trust him for he will rescue you from every trap protect you from deadly disease you may be seated. Amen. There are 16 verses, of course, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, uh, Psalms uh, this morning. Uh, we're not uh, sure exactly who wrote it, whether it was Moses or whether it was David. Whomever the author may have been, we yet believe uh, this is a powerful psalm. Uh, in the age in which we are living, in the time in which we're living, we need encouragement. Uh, we need God to lift us up. Uh, th this disease has not, uh, this virus rather has not gone as fast as we wanted, but I come this morning 
to speak a word about that, a covering for Omicron. The covering for Omicron. Can y'all say that we need a, a covering for Omicron? Amen. Or COVID, either way you want to look at it, it's a cover. We need a covering. We need protection uh, that only God can give us. And I tell you, there are many and many people who are, who are being tested positive. Uh, this morning, and we need to make sure that we are covered by the hand of God. Uh, a mask cannot cover you, or the vaccine cannot cover you like God can. And, and I tell you, we do need uh, a certain that we're going to wear our masks, and we're going to do those things that, that we, need, we need to do according to CDC, but we want to look at the Word of God today. According to the Word of God is how and how God covers us on a day-to-day -day basis. When you look at Psalms uh, 91, uh, Psalms 91 really is about your body. Uh, saying Psalms 91 is about your family. Psalms 91 is about protection over your family and over your health. When you read Psalms 91, it blesses your family, it blesses your body, and it blesses your health. The Jewish rabbis would quote Psalms 91 to strengthen their families. The Jewish rabbis would, would, would quote Psalms 91 when they needed divine healing. They were quoted every day that they would quote this Psalms 91 because they felt that God was in the power of divine healing. And they also believed that also that there was a, a strength that the family need in order to survive uh, in the world in which they were in. So if the Jewish rabbis thought so much of this Psalms that they were quoted uh, for their strength of their families and quoted for their own personal health, then I believe this morning I want to challenge each one of you that are listening and those who are present that you would send Psalms 91 to your children, uh, that you would text it to your children, not just one day, but do it every day. Get, get on that nerve by sending them Psalms 91 because eventually they will read what it's all about. And they will learn that, understand the reason I'm sending this to you is I'm sending it because I want protection uh, over your life. Yes, I, I want to be able to protect your, you cannot be where your children are located, but the word of God can and will protect them. So I believe if you, if I'm just challenging you, you may easily uh, take the challenge like y'all take the challenge y'all doing now, showing 10 years of me now, 10 years of me later, take this challenge. Because I believe this challenge can do more than what you looked like 10 years ago. And what matter of fact, if you're going to look anything better and live 10 years beyond today, you need to take this challenge of Psalms 91. Because it can protect your family and it certainly can protect your, your health. Amen. Yes, Psalms 91. Well, why do you want me to do that, Marina? Well, the reason why I want you to do it is because Psalms 91 is about God uh, delivering. It is about uh, God being a great deliverer that says that no matter what you go through and no matter uh, when you go through it, God will uh, deliver. And that's why this psalm, that we're going to walk through it this morning, and hopefully it be a blessing to you like it was a blessing to me to reread it and to restudy it because no matter how many years I've looked at it, God did something with my mind this week that he has not done in years past. And I believe Psalms 91 is going to bless everybody that's listening uh, to me this morning. Because one thing we want to make sure and understand is the first three things we want to look at in this Psalms is God provides a refuge. God provides a refuge. Second thing we're going to look at and deal with is that God provides rescue. <laughs> He provides refuge, and God provides rescue. And the third thing we want to make sure that we understand is that God provides reward. Can y'all say that with me, with me today? God provides refuge. God provides rescue. And God 
provides rewards. Uh, oh, oh, yes, he does. God is a, is a God of a refuge. Look at Psalms 91 and 1. As a matter of fact, it says, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. That's rescue. That is, that is rescue by itself. If you just dwell, uh, uh, you, you just abide in the shelter of the Almighty. If you, uh, if you automatically come under the shadow of God and of the most high El shadow of God, he said, God will uh, refuge. That, that's really what most high God is. That is the El shadow of God. That is the almighty God. That if we come up under his shelter, then God is able to protect us. And when you look at the word dwell, it also means to abide. If I abide under his shelter, then God will give me the refuge uh, that I need uh, in my life. But not only will he give me the refuge, God will also rescue me. Oh, yeah, 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 he'll rescue me. I, I want to submit to one thing to you this morning. If, if, if God, can't, God cannot refuge anybody, he cannot rescue rather anyone who has, who has not accepted his refuge. Uh, you must first accept the refuge before you can be rescued. And I tell you right now, brother, God, God is a great rescuer. God is a great person to run under his refuge. But not only will he do that, God will uh, provide a reward. Yeah, yes, he read, because why buy it? And the question comes, you, you, you really, you, I'm asking the question uh, this morning, why? Why should I abide or why should I dwell with God? Why, why should I dwell in God? I, and, and I'll tell you why you need to do it because you really need all three. You need his refuge. You need, to be, you need his rescue and you need uh, his reward. Matter of fact, just look down your pew and look at somebody and say, you need his refuge. I'm going to take my time. You need his rescue. And you need his what? Reward. You need all three of them. Amen. And, and you maybe somebody looking at you and, and you too. You need his refuge. You need to be rescued. And God will give you rewards that you need in this life. Yes, 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 Marini. Because I understand, I want to give you a great outline, I think, that will bless your life in Psalms 91. And, and the first thing about Psalm 91, we're looking at the outline. The first thing is a proclamation of God. The proclamation of God. That's in verse 1 through 8. The proclamation of, about God. Are y'all here? Y'all see it with me? The proclamation about God. But the second thing, in the, in, if we're looking at the outline this morning, that I want to give you to is not only the proclamation about God, but also the protection uh, from the Lord. The protection uh, from the Lord. That's found in verse 9 uh, through 13. The protection uh, of uh, God. Instead of focusing on COVID, I want you to focus on your covering. Yeah, yeah. Instead of focusing so much on this virus, I need you to focus more on a God than that can uh, protect you. Well, let me, let me let's flip it. Let's flip. Let's flip this. Flip nineteen. Now, flip nineteen. When you flip nineteen, what you got? Hey, y'all, come on now. Come on, don't don't let the folk don't, uh, listen to us. No, no, y'all listening to me. I know y'all in here, at least y'all ought to keep up where I'm going. Uh, now, the folk listening can't see it, but y'all at least ought to make sure y'all listening to what's going on. I said, you flip 19, you got what? 91. And what I want you, when you leave today, I want you to focus more on 91 uh, than you do on uh, 19. And if y'all real, I know y'all real smart about this. Y'all already have picked it up already in Psalms 91 and 1. You can use that. You can call 911. 
Are y'all here? 911 is Psalm 91 and 1. Look what he says right here. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High going to rest in the shadow of the Almighty. So if you need an emergency call, you got it right in Psalm 91. Because God is able to sustain and keep us and give us what we need to supply our every need. So it's in verse 9 through 13 that we have the protection of God. But through verse 14 through 16, we also have the promises from the Lord. Oh, y'all don't hear. I say we got the promises of, God, of the Lord. You know, one thing we got to understand, God will not lie. Now, you, you, no, 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 no. God will not lie. People will lie. Church folk will lie. But God will not lie. If God said it, that settles it. If God said it, he's going to do exactly what he said. So if God promised you a healthy life, he's going to give you what he promised. If God promised you to help you through this virus, he's going to do exactly what he said. Because God will not lie. Are y'all here? Because you understand, brothers, sometimes we got to be very careful on how we depend so much on people because people will make some blunders. But God never makes any blunders. He always come through. He always makes a way. He always will provide for our people. So when you look at it, brothers and sisters, we need to understand we have a refuge in God. Are y'all here? The New Living Translation of that first verse says, those who, who, you understand, he said, those who live in the shelter of the Most High. Y'all put that on the screen. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Now look what he says. He said, those who what? Live. Can y'all say Live. Those who live in the shelter, that means, and, and now the King James says, those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. But we want to look at that word this morning where he said those who what? Live. Not those that just pass me by. I want the people that believe in me to live in me. If I'm going to be blessed through this virus, then I need to make sure I find refuge in God and let God live in me. This I declare, I declare of the Lord that he alone is my refuge. He's alone is my place of safety. If I'm going to be surviving life, then I need to know that he's my God and I trust in him. He is. You know, we got all these plans. We got, you know, you can have all the plans you want to. But somehow, stuff that you, we get planned uh, sometimes has not gone through because of COVID. They, they, got, they have football teams. Half of them have COVID and can't play for the whole weekend. And we look at the Super Bowl. Super Bowl may not be as likely like you want it to be because half of them might have COVID. And you listen to me right now. You might have it right now. But I'm trying to get you to stop focusing so much on this virus and focus on God. Because God is your covering. Not COVID is not covering you. God is covering you. The reason why you made it this far is because God has protected you. Don't, don't play with me today. I said God, God has protected you. It's a place of safety. So I'm going to I'm going to run to his refuge because God is a place of safety. Well, let's keep on y'all. Y'all take good notes. I'm glad y'all. I see three moves in verse 1. I see three moves in in verse 1. One move you move in. One you move up and one you move under. Let's look at three moves. You move in, look what he says, those who live you moving in. You move up because of shelter of the most high. But you're moving under because you rest in the shadow. Oh my God, y'all making preaching hard. I say you got three moves. You move in, you move up, and you move under. 
And that's what God has blessed us with. Verse 1, because he said, he said, those who live in me, those who move in with me, those who move in is going to move up because they're under the shelter of the Most High. And if you're going to be under the shelter of the Most High, then I'm also going to move you under me because you're going to rest in my shadow. Because when I'm under the shadow of God, God is able to protect me from the things, elements of this world. So I came to preach this morning uh, that their hope is in uh, Jesus Christ. That all of my hope is in him. All of my belief, all of my trust is in Jesus Christ. God brought me here. He's going to keep me here. And he's going to lead me out of here. So I came this morning to give some hope and encouragement. That is all we need is in God. I said, can I get somebody to so say, I need his refuge. I need his refuge. I need to be refuge. But the second thing we need to do is make sure we rescue. Ooh, my God, you need to make sure you rescue. Let, let, let me make sure you write all this down. I want you to write down verse 3. Uh, at least number 3. Verse 3. Verse 5. Verse 6. Verse 13. Let's, 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 let's go now. Verse 3, verse 5, verse 6, verse 13. Now read them back to me, what I just told you. Read loud for the folk know you're right. Ver oh, great, great. Y'all got it. Okay, now you read it back to me. Let's, let's, I need you to do this. With verse 3, I want you to put a 2 by it. Verse 5, I want you to, be, to put a 2 by. Verse 3 got a 2. Verse 5 got a 2. Verse 6, I want you to put a 2 by. Are y'all here? No. Verse 13, what you think I want to put by that? Don't try to follow me. <laughs> put 1 by verse two, 13. Y'all, 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 come on. <laughs> Y'all trying to trying to trap me up in here? No, no. You put verse 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 three. You got a two. Verse five. You got two. Verse six. Verse uh, verse six. You got two. Verse thirteen. You got one. Now, when you add all them up, what you got? Seven. Yeah, y'all yeah, smart folk. Y'all y'all got to keep that up with that now. When you add two plus two plus two is six. One is is what adds to be what seven. So what I got is, I got, I got two situations in verse 3, I have two in 5, I got two in 13. Are y'all here in 6, rather? And I got one in 13. And all three of them equal to 7. So when you get to 7, it's going to be some power happening in here. Y'all ain't got it right now. Y'all gonna get it in a moment because you got to really understand what's happening uh, in this text this morning. Wrap it up, Moraine. God is saying, if you abide, if you dwell in me, here are seven things I can rescue you from. Oh, my God. He said, here are seven things I can rescue you from. Oh, my God, that's what he got to do. He got to rescue me from, first of all, verse 3 says, put verse 3 on the screen because they want to make sure we read it. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. Now, I said in verse 3, you got two of them. Uh, Y'all, you got two things God want to, going, want to rescue you from. One is trap. And the other is disease. Oh my God, y'all better help me here. One is trap, and one is what? Disease. King James Version says of that verse, he said he's going to get me from the snare of the fire. Uh, y'all, it's, it's in King James. You're going to be delivered from the snare of the fire. Where snare means trap. <laughs> it snare means trap. And also the fowler means the one that's setting it up. I'm preaching here today. So what he's saying is, I'm going to get you from the trap, 
I'm going to get you from the father. I'm going to get you from the one that's setting it up. And I'm going to get you out of the trap the devil trying to get you in. So I tell you this morning, I have two places I need to be rescued from. That's from the trap. Y'all ain't getting it right here. You got to get out of what the trap. And you also, I'm going to get you from the disease. Oh, my God. He, listen, he was, look, listen, look at verse 4. Look at verse 4. I'm not, we need to look at that. I, I didn't mean to bring it. He's going to cover you with his feathers. He'll share to you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Now, George, that he just said, he's going to get me from my traps and he's going to get me from my disease. How he going to do this? I'm going to cover you. I'm going to cover you with feathers. I'm going to cover you with the shelter of my wings. You know, when a, when, a, when a baby eaglet gets in trouble, while they're out there prancing around and looking everywhere and not paying attention, all of a sudden danger comes up. But the mother eagle is watching her eaglets. So when she sees the danger, she swoops down and she covers them with her wings. And while under her wings, uh, ain't nobody going to touch those eaglets because the mama got them covered. So I came to tell somebody in St. Luke, don't worry about the virus when you've been covered uh, by the hand of God. God got you covered. What y'all sitting here worried about when you covered? I'm not just talking about this, not just the disease, not just the virus, heart condition. He got you covered. Are you arthritis? He got you covered. Are y'all here a good hip, a bad hip? He got you covered. God got a bad knee, a good knee. God got you covered. And that's why I'm excited about it because the traps and the diseases could have gotten on your body. Y'all ain't hearing me today. So y'all sitting up here all think you got it together. There are some folk has been diagnosed with cancer. And this sermon might be more a blessing to them than it is to you. Because you've been diagnosed with an awful disease as cancer. You need to hear somebody say that God is can rescue you from the trap and the disease that can come on your body. But that ain't the only thing I need to be rescued from. I said verse 3 has 2, but verse 5 has 2. Look, at, look listen, listen, look, put verse 5 up there, please. I don't want them to think this is a gospel according to Moran. He said, do not be afraid. Matter of fact, y'all want y'all read it with me. <laughs> do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrows that flies in the day. Are y'all here today? So we got two more in verse 5. We have terrors and we got arrows. Are y'all here? Terrors come by the night. Arrows come by the day. Y'all are me here today. In other words, you need to stay connected to God so the arrows don't destroy you or the terrors don't mess you up because the stuff that's trying to destroy you, they may do it by night or they might do it by day. But I came to tell you right now, if you abide in him, no terror, no error, no trap, and no disease can come nigh your house. If you dwell in him, I ought to have amen every now and then. I said, we got stuff that happened to us at nighttime. And there's some stuff, George, that would mess with you in the daytime. It used to be folk would just steal and break in your house in the nighttime. Now they'll do it in the daytime. So I need somebody to help me at night. I need somebody to help me in the day. While the arrows are going, while the terror is going, I need a daytime God. Are y'all here? And my grandmother used to say he's a midnight rider. We should have somebody here. And I didn't know what she was talking about then like I do right now. What she meant was when you're at midnight, he'll be there with you. All night and all day, God will take care of you. I got terror. I got error. I have, I have disease. And you got some traps. Well, y'all ain't said amen. Y'all done tuned me off because you got your own agenda. 
Well, you can have yours. I got mine too. You came to church. You got to hear me out. I said, I got two in verse five. I got two in verse three. But I got two in verse six. Put verse six on the screen. Amen. This ain't my gospel. It's his. Let's read it together. Do not dread the disease that stalks in the darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Keep it up there, Evan, because they ain't getting it real good. I told you we got terrors that mess with us at night, and we got errors that mess with us in the day. But then he comes, he said, verse 6, and he said, don't let that dread you. Do not let that dread you, because I got two words in there. One is a stalker, and one is a disaster. I got a stalker, and I got a disaster. Oh, y'all, come here, come here. Y'all do know what stalkers are. Stalkers, you do know what it is. Where, 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 where is it? Because you, you've been one yourself. You know what a stalker is. Or, or, or you have, or you've been stalked. Yeah, you, either you have been, or you, and maybe, maybe you be, you're a stalker now. So he said, don't let that disease stalk you. Are y'all here? In other words, what a stalker does Tip, a stalker follows you. <laughs> a stalker follows you. Come on now, y'all know what it is. And they're consumed up by night. Uh, y'all, yeah. They like the darkness because they, they can't let you see them stalking them. So they hide in certain places. So he said, don't let a disease stalk you in the darkness. You know, some of us pick up everybody's disease. Just because they got it, I got it. Just because your mama died with cancer doesn't mean you're going to die with it. And just because you got diagnosed with cancer and it's a terminal disease and everybody you know died from it, but you might be the one that doesn't win. Oh, my God, here. Yeah. It doesn't mean you're going to die from it. You might live with it. Come on here. Come here. Don't you know God can allow stuff to happen to you and bless you to live with it? It's even greater than you can live without it. Come on here. Won't he do it? I say, won't he do it? Some of y'all got some stuff now you living with. You didn't want it, but you're still living with it because God will protect you. Stalkers, that's following us. But then I tell you, and I, matter of fact, George, there are three types of stalkers. Problem, possessions, and people. <laughs> yeah, y'all better take some good notes. I said there are some problems that stalk you. Possessions can stalk you. And people will stalk you. You worried about problems? You worried about all them possessions? You can lose all your possessions in one hour. Are y'all here? A tornado can come through Covington and you lose everything you got. So if all your hope is built on what you have, it can go up in smoke in about five seconds. And you're going to need more than possessions. You're going to need a power of God to help you through it. And people, you know people will stalk you. Yeah, they'll do it, but I tell you, verse, but not only will they stalk you, but he said, then there are disasters that come by midday. Look what he said, that stalkers will strike at midday. In Hebrew time, they had four different watches. They would, they would have some, we'd be night watch, day, darkness, and midday. <laughs> Yeah, the Hebrews had four watches. Some will do by night watch, day watch, darkness, and midday. I came to tell, so submit to you today, I don't care what time they come. God said they're not going to destroy you. Ooh, my God, I don't care. I don't care if they come at night. I don't care if they come by midday. I don't care how they come by noon. They're not going to strike you down because I'm telling you these are the things you need to be rescued from. Do anybody here need to be rescued so far? Come on, now, let's go over it before I give you the last one. One that you need to be rescued from the traps. Can y'all say traps? Need to be rescued from the disease. 
need to be rescued from terror, error, stalkers, and disasters. Ain't he all right? I'm, I'm sanctified happy today that I left home and didn't have a disaster. I'm sanctified happy today that the wind been blowing uh, but didn't blow my house down. I'm sanctified happy today that I'm still whole. I'm, I'm still happy and I need two people. I don't need but two people that shout about I didn't have a disaster. Y'all, y'all, y'all worrying about the rain. It might rain tomorrow and you're going to do what you do. Oh, y'all, you're going to do what you're going to be where you got to be. But when it comes down to God, all I can just stay in today. But I don't care where you are. What I'm telling you right now, can nothing happen to you because God says, I got you. Well, 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 well two, two, four, six. Uh, let me see. Two, four, six. We got six. I said seven things you need to be rescued from. The seventh is in verse 13. Put 13 on there, Evan. Amen. You will trample upon lions and cobras. You will cross fierce lions, and you're going to put serpents under their feet. Well, you got one more. I didn't have a one in verse 13. Know what it is? Enemies. Come on now. Y'all ought to talk back to me. Come on, choir. Y'all ain't sleep, are you? Enemies. And sometimes you are your enemy. It ain't other folks. Sometimes it's you that's causing you some problem. You looking down the road. It ain't the person on the road. It might be you. Your greatest enemy sometimes is us. So I came to tell you, but that ain't the one I'm talking about. The one I'm talking about is Satan. Satan is your enemy. Satan has some serpent. And Satan has some lions. Are y'all here? There are three enemies that come up against man. The world, the flesh, and the devil. Those are three enemies that come up against everybody in here. I don't see some of y'all go, these masses got you covered. I need to be looking at y'all faces right now. I see you got three enemies. And the enemy is not me. It's the world the devil and the flesh. Y'all help me say it. The world, the devil, and the flesh. The world is your external enemy. Yeah, priest Marina. And the flesh is your internal enemy. Are uh, y'all here? And, 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 and the devil is your infernal enemy. <laughs> the world will mess you up on the outside. The flesh would mess you up on the inside, and the devil will set you apart. But I came to tell somebody here today, you can trample on the devil. You can put your foot on the devil. But well, Marina, how can if you abide, if you stay connected, the devil can't harm you if you're connected with God. Y'all ain't got it? Ah, man, I don't know what's going to take to get some of y'all off that pew. Is it holding you? Is the pew holder, if this don't make you move, ain't nothing going to make you move. Because I tell you, I just added up. Verse 3, I got 2. Verse 5, I had 2. Two things I need to be rescued from. Uh, verse 6, I had 2. And then verse 13, I had 1. And all of them equal up. Man, y'all the smartest church in Tiffany. Y'all the smartest church in Tiffany County. All of them added up 7. Well, then when you add up seven, you got to find yourself at verse seven. Seven is the point of completion. When I get to verse seven, put it on the, on, on the screen, Evan, because they think it's me. Y'all read it with me. Read slow. Though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are down around you. Oh, my God, y'all ain't got it. Y'all ain't got it here. I know y'all didn't hear what I'm saying. It might be folk dying from it. It might be folk dying all around you. But look what it said. But these evils will not touch you. I, I don't know what's going to make y'all get off your pew. 
I don't know what makes y'all shout in here. All this stuff might happen to you, to everybody around you, but it ain't gonna happen to you. Look down your pew and tell somebody, it ain't gonna touch you. I don't hear y'all say, hey man, I, I said, won't eat these evils will not touch you. You might be overwhelmed. You may be losing your house. They may be losing their job, but it ain't gonna touch you. Wish I had some folk in here right now. Psalm 91 is more potent than COVID. Can y'all get some help? I said, Psalm 91 got more power than COVID. But y'all sitting up here like, I just told y'all, that stuff ain't gonna touch you. It might touch your neighbor, but it ain't gonna get you. Why, how it ain't gonna get you? Cause I'ma stay all connected. I'ma abide. I'ma dwell. Ooh, I didn't mean, I didn't mean to act like this. But I tell you, when I think about it, how God done kept me, I can't help but give him some praise. Matter of fact, before I get ready to take my seat, I, want, I just wanted to play just a call or two of some praise. Maybe y'all are praising. When you think about God that kept you from all these evils, from all these diseases, you know it all been God by himself. Ain't he all right? Just give me a call. That just make me get happy. They ain't got to get happy. I want to get happy myself. Yes, 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 I've been covered, I've been rescued. Yes, I've been taken care of by the hand. Almost home. I'm almost gonna let you up out of here. I said I've been, I got to run into a refuge. Woo! I've been rescued. I've been kept by the power of God. Yes, yes, I've been kept today. I got about two more things. I'm going to let you go. Listen. I'm not saying. I'm not saying. It can't hurt you. I'm saying it won't hurt you. <laughs> Y'all tell your neighbor, neighbor. I'm not saying. It can't hurt you. But I am saying. It won't hurt you. You might get COVID. You might get tested positive, but God is a keeper. Yes! Yes, he is a keeper. You can judge me if you want to. But I tell you right now, you might get positive. But don't let that positive test keep you from praising God. Don't let that loss keep you from praising God. I know you're hurt. You lost your loved one. But don't let that keep you from praising God. Because every now and then it could have been you instead of them. But God is a keeper. Well, I got one more thing. If you think that's something, you wait till I sit down. So look at what verse 9 says. I'm going to do all 16. Y'all might well hold on. It ain't taking me long to get it. Look at verse 9. Put it up there on the screen they have a, so they can listen. Look at it. Look what he says. Verse 9. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelf. Now listen. Now listen. Listen, George. Look what he said. He said, if you make the Lord your refuge. He said, if you 
make the Lord your safe place. Y'all ain't got it yet? If you make the most high your shelter. Listen, listen, Mike. I can't make you trust God. But if you trust him, y'all ain't what I'm saying. I can't make y'all trust him. But if you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Lord your most high, look at what God say he gonna do. Look at verse 10. Verse 10. I, I, I can hear. No evil will conquer you. No plague gonna come near your house. Y'all ain't saying me saying I'm, I'm from the old school. I believe in the old stuff. Because the old stuff still works. And you all right? Like old school music. Ain't nothing like this new school music. That's why these boys going back to old school. Because old school will make you move. Want to do it? I came here to tell somebody, listen. Old school believes the blood on the doorpost still works. If you cover your house, God will cover your family. Anybody here believe in the blood? The blood never loses power. I need some saints in here that believe if you cover with the blood of Jesus, evil. Well, I'm, I'm protected. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. I'm protected. Are y'all here? I can go to Kroger. I can go to Naples. I can even go to church. And still I'm covered. Y'all ain't said amen here. You can go to Walmart. You can go to Naples. You can come to church. If he can cover you at your house, he can cover you at the church house. Ain't he all right in here? Come on, y'all, praise him one more time. I am. Well, well, y'all ain't got it, but I'm done. I tell you what else he'll do for you, Mike. What he'll do, I got to do the whole text. God, in verse 11, what he does, what he does, Tip, what he does, Cassandra, what he'll do is he'll order his angels to protect you wherever you go. <laughs> God will put an angel at your house. God will put an angel in your car. God will put an angel in his said, because look what he said here. He will give him charge over you. That means he'll appoint them. He'll install them and he'll give them a command. And then he said, he'll guard you in all your ways. That means he'll keep you. He'll watch over you. He'll observe you. And then he said, hey, so I'll bear you up on eagle wings. I'll put you in my hand. That means I'll carry you. Won't he do it? I said, all night and all day, the angels keep watch over me. Good morning, St. Luke. That's all I came to tell you is the rewards. Marina, what are the rewards? He gave me some promises. That's what the rewards are. Look at verse 13 and verse 14. Put 14 up there, Evan, and I'll let them alone. I'm going to leave y'all alone. Y'all didn't, didn't come to have church. The Lord says, I'll rescue those who love me. I'll protect those who trust in my name. Y'all read the same thing? I'm going to rescue those who love me, and I'm going to protect those who trust my name. Ain't he all right today? I ain't done yet. Look at 15. Come here. Come here. When they call on me, when they call on me, I will answer. Oh, no. He can't answer if you don't call him. 
If you don't call him, he can't answer you. So you got to call him so he can answer you. But I ain't done yet. Look what he said. I will be with him in trouble. If you're in trouble, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Because you call him, he'll answer, and I'll be with you in trouble. I ain't done yet. Then I will rescue and honor them. Are y'all here? I'll rescue them, then I'm going to honor them. Well, he's number one. I hear you. Number two, I'm going to hold you. Number three, I'm going to honor you. Mm -mm -mm. I heard you when you called me. Are y'all here? I'm holding you while you're calling. Reason why just some of y'all ain't got no answer because you ain't called. You called your boo thing. Your boo thing get COVID too. Why you gonna call him? Why you gonna call her? She can't give you out no trouble, but I know a man from Galilee. If you in sin, he'll set you free. And then he said, I will honor you. I'm done. Then the last thing he said, verse 16, he said, I'm going to satisfy you with long life. I'm done. And God's going to satisfy you with long life. If you obey him, God will give you a reward with long life. Now, y'all just clap because y'all like me. Now, clap because you like the Lord. I'll tell you one thing COVID going to do. COVID going to make you come back to God. COVID going to make you pray more. And COVID going to make you come back to church. Because i tell you one thing, it ain't getting ready to go no place. So you can line up all your stuff, but you better line up God. Because you can get all your plans. Everybody done plan to be there. Can't be there. But I came to tell somebody that God will protect you. Do y'all believe that today? Let me ask you. Are y'all glad y'all came to church today? Are you glad you tuned in today? Because in Psalm 91, to keep you, I tell y'all to read it every day. If you don't read nothing there, read Psalm 91. And to near when you get to school, you can read Psalm 91. Ain't no one thing you don't even have to read. Just hit that button on your iPhone. They'll talk to you. It'll talk to you all the way to school. Because some trouble can be at the schoolhouse. Some mental issues going on at the schoolhouse. Children, families, teachers, all under stress. All under this shadow. But I'm telling you, the saints goes covered. I'm telling you, I wouldn't, I, if there's ever a time I want to be a Christian, I shall be one now. If any time I ever wanted to be, I'll be one now. Because the one that's covered is going to make it. The one that's not covered is going to have a difficult time. You can get all the shots and they're going to come up with another one. Don't worry, it's coming. They're going to have another one. This virus is going to be just around just like flu. It ain't going nowhere. But I'll tell you one thing. You're going to run to God before we leave. You're going to run to him. I'm done. That's all I got for y'all this morning. I pray you were blessed by being here. The door of the church is open. I didn't mean, know it was going to take me that long, but y'all were slow about saying amen. So if you slow, I'll take my time. The door of the church is open today for you to come. Even if you're online you, and you want to be a member of this church, you can do it by just signing in online. You can be our online member. We have collected some online members. I 
I don't know. I, I don't know what. I don't know what makes y'all shout. I said we've had some online members. We got. We have some online folk paying tithes. Oh my God! I don't even know who they are, but they're online folk. But they love this ministry, and they want to be connected to it. I get you love it like they love it. We'll have something going on. Today, you can come to Jesus Christ. You can give God a chance at your life today. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Lord, I pray today for that family right now that's unsaved. I pray now, God, that you don't give them no rest until they find rest in you. I pray that you'll keep them up at night and day until they find rest in you. I pray right now that you'll send the hounds from heaven and you'll smell them out right now. They need to be saved. They need to be connected to Jesus Christ. Don't have to be this church. They can go wherever they want to, but they need Jesus Christ in their life. I pray right now for that person in this building today that needs to come and give God a chance at your life. Thank you right now. We give you praise and honor today. Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you today. May God keep you. I pray that somehow you were just blessed by being present. Sometimes it's good to be present. And we're certainly uh, praying for uh, those families that are grieving. Copeland and Harris is in Lauderdale County. We're praying for Shumler's children. To lose a mother in your 30s and 20s is painful. But when you've had a mama that covered them like she did, they're going to be all right. They'll be all right because God's going to keep them. So pray for that family. Pray for those who are grieving, those who are hurting, the pain that they're encountering, that God will just keep them covered. In the name of our God. We love you today and may God bless you. May God keep you. Uh, the announcements, we, our fast begins tomorrow on January 10th. I pray that everybody will participate. It's nothing but you to be calling and discussing and complaining and all that. No, this is spiritual business. Uh, this is the business of God. That you are cleaning your life spiritually. And you're taking out stuff you don't need and putting in stuff you do need. It's a sacrifice. If you fall off the boat one day or one, two days, get back home and make the 21-day fast. Be a blessing to yourself. Be a blessing to your family. Be a blessing to this church. I'm making this 21-day fast work for you and work for your family. Every morning at 6 o'clock, you can tune in to Facebook Live. I'm there praying with, praying for you. So uh, you say, I'll get up that early. Most retired folk don't. Retired folk get up when they get ready. But it'll be on there at 9 o'clock. So please, ma'am, please, sir, uh, tune in. If you're up at 6 o'clock, come on, tune in and be blessed of God. Our couples minister to having a Valentine Gala on the 4th of February. Uh, the tickets are, are available. You can see those on the committee. Uh, this morning uh, up until the time of, of February the 2nd. We need you to participate in this gala. Amen? Yeah. Not just for couples, not just for married folk, it's folk that think they want to be married. It's for singles too. Amen? It's for singles as well. Amen? Uh, amen. You can come, you can come by yourself. You might find somebody. <laughs> Never know. Y'all go other places by yourself. That's okay. There ain't nothing wrong with it. The happiest person you can be and make yourself happy.
And I pray this morning that you would be a participant for February 4th celebration. Amen. And also the food truck uh, uh, is out in the back under the uh, breezeway in the back. You can just pick up you something on your way home for your snack. You can eat dinner later. This is just for your snack. Uh, they'll be there in the back, Georgia and Willie. They're under the breezeway so you won't have to get wet. Amen. God bless you and may God keep you in perfect peace. Let us all stay. That's all. We have online Bible study every Wednesday at 6 o'clock. If nobody else tune in, St. Luke ought to be tuning in. You're not in the building. You're at your house. All you got to do is tune in. Amen. You ought to want to be blessed by Wednesday about the Word of God. So please come be a part of our series, But God. Uh, see, we started last Wednesday, and we'll, we'll continue this Wednesday. Amen. At 6 o'clock uh, on virtual. Amen. Let us bow our heads. Lord, I gave them what you gave me. My God, I pray that you'll work it, that you'll bless it. The results are not mine. The results are yours. My job is to preach the word. My job is to teach the word. I'm leaving the results up to you that you're going to use it on the people that needs to receive it. Thank you right now, God, for those online. Bless them right now. Give them perfect peace. We thank you right now. Now to him who's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless in the presence of Almighty God, to the only wise God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, his power, dominion, both now and evermore. And all the people of God said, Amen.